Hello, this is Jacinta, and in this video, I'll be sharing many breath practices and tips for overcoming chronic stress and anxiety that result when our nervous system becomes imbalanced. So our nervous system is divided into two components, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. At any one time, we're operating in one or the other. It's the sympathetic nervous system that generates the stress response. It creates a tremendous boost of energy to all the systems in the body, enabling us to quickly get out of harm's way. And we might experience it as that boost of energy in the body and that activated mindset that we experience when we have a pressing task that we need to initiate. So this is often referred to as the fight and flight response. The parasympathetic nervous system is often referred to as rest and digest, and it's required for proper digestion, proper sleep, as well as body maintenance and healing. Now, the sympathetic nervous system should just switch on and then quickly turn off again, allowing the parasympathetic nervous system to be healing the body, restoring our body and keeping us healthy and well. But this, so with all of these compounding stresses in our lives, our sympathetic nervous system stays on for long periods of time. And our bodies just weren't designed for that. Without that parasympathetic nervous system function, our bodies aren't having the, the time to heal and to repair. And so we see chronic stress, anxiety, panic attacks. And this, of course, contributes to pretty much all of the chronic diseases that we see over time. Now, this video was recorded in a really lovely venue in Houston, Texas called She Space. So I invite you to sit back, relax, and breathe for a healthy mind and lifestyle. And so we're going to begin by practicing a simple, long, deep breath. Now, we can always check in to see where we're at because if our shoulders are sort of moving up and down and the chest is all up here and the breath is all up here, then we're not breathing into our lungs completely. And although often we don't need to be doing that during the daytime, uh, when we practice this, it means that overall our breath is going to be far more efficient and we're going to be activating that parasympathetic nervous response that generates relaxation. I should also mention, I'm sure some of you have heard of, of the vagus nerve. This is a nerve that runs from the brain all the way it winds through the body, impacting every system in the body, comes all the way down deep into the body. And when we can stimulate the vagus nerve, this is the way that we can you know, hack the body and stimulate the relaxation response. The diaphragm is a great way to do that. So let's practice the long, deep breath. So whether you're sitting in a chair or on the ground as we are here, Let's just find ourselves. Just allow your eyes to gently close. And just notice where your overall level of stress is. Like if you were rushing to get here, you might be feeling a little bit tense. Yeah, a bit stressed out. But that's okay. We always want to meet ourselves where we are at. Notice what's going on in our mind. And if we had it just been triggered, just being okay, okay, I've been triggered and recognizing that stress, these feelings, these thoughts that, you know, align with stress and anxiety, they're not really us. Peace is our natural state. So now let's find where we're at, meet ourselves where we're at, be perfectly fine with where we're at. Now watch what the breath is doing as the body is breathing all by itself without any help from us consciously. Notice how it's moving through the nose. Notice how it's moving down your throat. And notice if there's any movement in the chest or in the belly. And so now I invite you to bring your hands over your belly and begin to breathe in and out through the nose so that the belly begins to expand with the inhale. Now in order to get the belly to expand as we inhale, it means that our diaphragm moves down in the body 
And as a consequence, it allows the lungs to open even wider. Feeling the belly move out with the inhale. And so of course it moves in towards the spine with the exhale. Now we can work with that long deep breath by bringing the navel point, the belly, in towards the spine, using those muscles to help the exhale. So let's deepen the breath a little more. Breathing into the belly and then with the exhale, right towards the end, gently bringing the muscles of the belly in towards the spine. And in that way, the diaphragm moves up. The lungs contract and release more air. It's looking like everyone's doing that beautifully. So we can just bring our hands now to rest on the knees. So now with a long, deep breath, we're taking the breath deep into the lungs, but it doesn't stop there. We then continue the breath and we breathe into the middle part of our lungs and then the top part of our lungs because they come all the way up to the base of the neck, right here at the collarbones. So it's like a wave. So imagine a wave of breath filling the lower part of the lungs and the middle part and the upper part. And you'll notice that the chest will lift to create that space. And then as it leaves the body, it leaves the top of the chest first and then the middle part, and then the lower part of the lungs. So it's like a wave flowing in, and then the wave flowing out. And at the end, pull the belly in towards the spine, let all the breath go. So this isn't how we regularly breathe, but it's a practice that can remind us that when we are regularly breathing, that we're gonna breathe a little more deeply and that our diaphragm is going to be involved. Because I know for myself, sometimes you can be working on the computer and your breath is so shallow. So breathing in to the deep part of the lungs, then the middle part, upper part of the lungs, and then from the upper part of the lungs, releasing to the middle part of the lungs. And then the lower part of the lungs gently pulling in on the belly at the end. Let all the breath go. Squeeze the lungs out. And then that really helps to facilitate that next breath in. It feels great when that breath flows in. Breathing up to the top part of the lungs. From the top to the middle to the bottom. Pulling in on the belly. So simply with this practice, we absolutely begin to calm down. We refresh the blood supply in the body with all of that wonderful oxygen. And we've been using the diaphragm. So that is one amazing technique to begin that process of relaxation. Now a second breath. You can still apply this to the long deep breath or to a regular breath is to breathe in for a shorter period than the exhale. So for example, if you're in a situation where you're feeling yourself really starting to become anxious, just count the breath in. One, two, three, exhale. One, two, three, four, five. If you counted four as you breathed in, you might exhale over a period of a count of six. So this too is a wonderful body hack that we can use to relax. Just gently counting how long it takes you to take that breath in. And then slowing the breath down as you exhale. So 
that it takes more time to release the breath. And so this is a breath that you pretty much can do anywhere. Wherever stress might find you. Wonderful. So remembering that the breath in is going to be shorter than the exhale. And when we have that happening, the body will become more relaxed. So the next breath that we're gonna put into our tools today is the square breath. It's called the square breath because we're going to breathe in, pause, exhale, and hold the breath out for equal length. Now, when we pause the breath, this gives our mind an opportunity to process whatever's been going on. And this is the issue too with stress because if we have a lot of things that are you know, coming into our world that are creating stress, we don't have the time to process them. They just pile up on top of each other. So with this breath, we add the pause after the inhale and after the exhale. So I'm going to count to four and I'm going to breathe in. I'll count to four. We're going to hold the breath in the body. I'll count to four. We'll breathe out. Bless you. And then as you hold the breath out, I'll count to four. So let's come back into a nice long spine. It always helps to breathe when we've got our spine tall. You can do it in the chair, standing up. Just creates more space between this area here, between the ribs and the belly so that the diaphragm can be moving. So let's begin this breath. I'm going to count. So let's empty the breath out. And let's begin the breath. Inhale, one, two, three. Four, hold the breath, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, hold the breath out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four. Hold the breath, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, and hold the breath out, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold it in. Release, two, three, four, and hold the breath out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, Release, two, three, four, hold the breath out, two, three, four, and relax, just breathe normally now. Just take a moment to notice how you're feeling, feeling perhaps a little calmer, a little more peaceful. So, this brings me now to intentions, you know, when we have that pause, we can always set an intention for what it is we're wishing to overcome or we're wishing to create. And when we really mindfully, consciously say, I really need to overcome my anger or my frustration with this particular circumstance in my life right now, and then we can you know, begin one of these breaths, the square breath we just practiced breath where the exhale is longer or simply a long deep breath 
And anytime, you know, this square breath is a wonderful balancing breath. This is something when you're feeling a little frustrated, standing in line at the supermarket, you know, just practice the square breath. Just bring some nice fresh prana in. No one will know you're even doing it. Just breathing in and out through the nose, counting to yourself. And you might have noticed that I was slowing it down a little bit each time. You can do that for yourself. As you slow the breath down, slow down the mind. So the mind follows the breath. This is why the breath is such a powerful tool that we all have to help us dealing with stress. And the other point I'd like to make here is that all of these work so beautifully with the practice of mindfulness and you know whatever self-care work that you're doing really mindfulness and breath are at the core so when we talk about mindfulness it's about whatever task we're doing being in the task keeping our mind in present time attention even if we're brushing our teeth you know i'm brushing my teeth right now my teeth are getting clean my teeth are so strong yeah, you know, like really engaging in the moment. And the more that we practice being in the moment, it is statistically and scientifically proven that people are happier, more productive, uh, more abundant, uh, and generally live much more joyful lives. And so when this mindfulness movement commenced, companies like Apple and Microsoft and the, you know, the big, big companies, they realized that if they wanted more productivity in the workplace, that mindfulness was the key. That the more people practice mindfulness, you might practice it for a minute a day, maybe three, but then of course it's going to merge in with your regular life. You start to become more mindful. Like I'm taking a shower, I'm gonna really think about, I'm washing my body and I'm really getting clean. I'm feeling rejuvenated with this water and really having that sensory experience. Mindfulness is about present time attention, being in the moment. So if we're not on the, in the moment, where are we? We're either living something out in the past, which is done, or we are projecting to the future, which we don't have a lot of power for. And of course, there's times for planning, there's times for processing, but generally speaking, we want to continue to bring our awareness back to the moment. You know, driving is a classic example, particularly on those routes that we know so well and we arrive and we're like, I don't even remember driving here because we were thinking here and thinking there, we were anywhere else but really in the car. So again, just okay, I'm driving, my hands are on the wheel, I'm looking around, I'm staying in present time attention. And we've talked about um, present time attention also too, looking around our space. I'm sitting on this carpet on my yoga mat, there's a window to my left. There's a green door over here and another one here. I see a pink and a yellow chair and really what I call a locational, really bringing ourselves into this moment. Sounds very basic, but these are fundamentally really powerful tools. So now let's move on now to another breath. It's wonderful for activating the vagus nerve. It's kind of fun because we're using our mouth. We're extending our lips into a pucker. It's called the whistle breath because for some of us, when we do it, breathing in and out through this puckered mouth, we start to make a whistle sound. So let's see if we can make some noise. Um, if not, that's perfectly fine too. So again, finding a good posture in your body to breathe, lots of space for that breath to move in and out. And you know, I just naturally come to this Gyan Mudra posture. This is, you know, if you practice yoga or not, people think, what is this? Well, this is about connecting a circuit of energy. So we are energy moving through our bodies. And this particular energy circuit that we connect uh, without going into all of it, it simply connects us with wisdom. So we just become a little wiser and it's a centering practice. So if you wish, if not, that's fine. Another really nice way to hold the hands when if you are doing like a practice where you're saying, I'm going to do my breath practice, is simply placing one palm into the other and you can touch the thumb tips together and that's a really nice way to breathe it tends to bring us into a more contemplative state of mind so if there's something you do want to process something you want to think through this is a good posture so we are moving to our whistle breath 
So let's pucker our lips, let's extend them, and let's see how it goes. We're gonna use the long deep breath as we practice. Let's begin. And as you continue, gently call your mind back each time it wanders. Bring it back to the sound of your breath. Feel into your body. As you continue, just check in that you're filling your lungs to a comfortable point and that you're exhaling, gently activating those belly muscles to help release all the breath. Nice. So with each of these breaths, for the most part, we've been doing them for you know, a minute or so and they really do shift your consciousness. You do find you become more grounded in the body, calmer, more peaceful. So now we're going to move to a breath that I personally really, really love. And this breath is great if we want to feel relaxed, but we also want to feel energized. So we want to feel like we can get out there and do things, but we don't want to be agitated at the same time. So this is a breath where we breathe in through the nose for four segments. segments. So we fill the lungs complete with four even breaths in through the nose. And then we exhale. And we can choose to exhale out of the mouth or out of the nose with a long exhale. And we want that exhale to be at least as long as those four breaths took to, to come into the body um, or longer. So again, my favorite breath because I, I find that um, it really helps you master being in control of the breath using these segments. So again, let's try this. We'll come back into a long spine. Create that nice space between the diaphragm and the pelvis. And let's begin four even segments, breathing in through the nose like this. And then exhale, mouth or nose it longer than the inhale took. Now, as you continue the four sniffs in, long exhale out, you can imagine breathing in something that you wish to bring into your life, an intention that you have for yourself at this time. And with the exhale, breathing out that long, slow breath, seeing it come into formation, you feel it in your body too. See your goals and dreams coming closer and closer as you take those four. 
Four breaths in. And then exhale like you're blowing it all up on a big screen, seeing your best life all happening and letting yourself feel the emotion that goes with that wonderful intention that you have for yourself. Another way to approach this breath is you can bring a mental mantra to it, which can help anchor and center our thoughts. You could have something like with the four sniffs in, I am peaceful. Exhale, anything that's taking you away from feeling peaceful and calm. I am abundant. Exhaling any blockages, any self doubt about yourself. And as you continue this breath. As you find you're really finding a nice rhythm, you can change the rhythm just a little by creating a longer pause between each of the four breaths in. And one final thing that I like to add when I'm practicing this breath is really savoring the breath. Like this wonderful, beautiful breath filled with life force energy that's what we need in every moment in our lives. Like feeling that sense of gratitude, appreciation as we're gently sniffing it into our bodies and then allowing the exhale away anything, toxins, stagnation, the thoughts we wish to release, the feelings that we wish to release. So now when you finish the cycle that you're on with the next exhale, allow yourself to come back to your natural rhythm. Now living in Houston, Texas, also we have chairs as well, if anyone would like to sit in the chair. Um, we live in a really hot climate. So this next breath is awesome for activating the parasympathetic vagus response through the vagus nerve. And it's also a physical cooling breath, a breath that cools the body down. And the way we practice this one is we extend the tongue out of the mouth and if possible you make a u-shape so some people can do it some can't you got it so it's like this but simply extending the tongue does the same job by curling the tongue we're really feeling more of the process we're getting more of that surface area um, feeling that breath come in so what we do with this breath as we breathe in through the mouth over the tongue. Exhale out of the nose. So let's try it. Inhale over the tongue. Exhaling out of the nose. She 
continue. Just check in that you're breathing into the deepest part of the lungs first, then the middle, and the chest lifts as the breath comes higher into the lungs. And then as you exhale out of the nose, the breath is leaving the top of the lungs, then the middle, then the belly, and then gently pulling in on the belly to release more air. So this breath restores sweetness and you might even notice that as you're practicing that you might get some different taste sensations in your tongue. You might in fact taste a bitterness. So this is a very cleansing breath. While it cools the body down, it's a cleansing breath and thus it restores the sweetness in our nature as well as in our physiology. A beautiful breath, the Sipkali breath, this one is called. So let's take a deep breath in now. Exhale out of the mouth with a sigh. One more. Wonderful. Now, we're, while we're breathing in through the nose and exhaling out of the mouth, there's a breath that we call the cannon breath. If we have something that's really just plaguing on us, sometimes we can't get a thought out of our mind, a circumstance, we just want to blast it out and let it go. Cannon breath is really great. Now, the cannon breath uses these very same muscles that we've been using as we pull the belly in towards the spine allowing that diaphragm to come back up, squeezing out the lungs. Because as we use our cannon with our exhale, we're going to use these belly muscles to really send that breath out like a cannonball. So again, we can come back to an intention. I really, I wish to release the thought of whatever it might be. I intend to release the anxiety that I feel around this particular thing that's going to happen or you know, a certain event or whatever it might be. So as you take that breath in then, a nice deep inhale into the nose, filling up with fresh breath, fresh life force energy that's gonna replace that. And then you blast it out like a cannonball. So it's like this, what you're blasting out is what you're ready to release. you'll feel the muscles in the belly. You may even feel them in the side of the body, feeling the ribs coming together. Let's try it again. Big breath in. Let's release. Beautiful. It's a nice quick in and out. And use your mind. What are you blasting out of your consciousness? And then after a few times, just come back to a nice gentle breath and continue as necessary. But again, this is really working with our mind and using the body and the breath to really overcome something that might be really just you know, poking us, provoking us. Wonderful. So now what if we are really mad? Something happens and we are, we are, here it comes, can't do anything about it. Well, one really good trick is to squeeze your shoulders. So from an Eastern anatomy perspective, when you squeeze the shoulders, this activates particular meridians that will actually bring the energy down. So when we feel that anger, you'll feel it, like it comes up in the body. And sometimes you'll see someone, their face becomes very red when they become angry. So when we squeeze here, the energy goes down. So that can help somewhat. But of course, we have some wonderful breaths. And the first one I'd like to share with you is the lion's breath. So now with the lion's breath, we take a big breath in through the nose. And notice it's always in through the nose. And this is important because we have 
um, a humidifying system in our nose and our pharynx that brings moisture to the air so it's kinder to the lungs. Breathing out, you know, is, is, is a choice. Most of these breaths are breathing in and out through the nose, not the lion's breath. This breath is a beautiful, big, raw out, and there's a few other components. We are going to bring our tongue, extend the tongue, so you really feel the muscle in the tongue very stretched. Feel it pulling in from the back of the mouth. Uh, I'm going to reach the tip of the tongue down as far as we can. And that's going to be our posture with the exhale. And then with the inhale, we're taking a breath in. With this one, we're going to keep our eyes wide open. We're feeling fierce because we're so angry. We bring our paws up. We bring our claws in like so. We breathe in. Breathe in. Noticing all this action here. Do one more for good measure. And relax. Now that one surely shifts you, right? You really feel, wow, you just activated your whole body. And believe you me, if you practice that breath a few times, you will absolutely calm down. So we want to extend the tongue. We want to feel the tongue really extended, coming down over the mouth here over the chin, we want the eyes to be wide. We want to really release with all of our ferocity, whatever that anger is, whatever that circumstance is. Remember, use your intentions. Like, what was it? I'm going to release it. I'm going to transmute it. We don't want anger to live in the body, just like we don't want all manners of stress to chronically live in our bodies. Because they find all kinds of parts of the bodies to, to live, and then the body hurts. So another great breath for overcoming anger is a rounded mouth. And contrary to what I just said, we're gonna breathe in and out through the mouth very powerfully. Um, one more point on that lion's breath. We're really using all the muscles with that exhale. So did you feel that? Like it's very, you know, using all those muscles to really propel anger, it's leaving the body. And one more thing I will mention here as well is that when these emotions come and visit us, I want to just you know, plant that tip in your mind that when we feel these emotions, no matter what shape these chronic stress, anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, they're not us. They really are not us. They are a response, but they are not us. They are something that is traveling through us and so it's good to mind our language like i am angry like no anger is just living here for a moment while it is on its way you know um, i'm feeling really anxious at the moment but this isn't me my natural state is peace anxiety is living here i'm going to practice my square breath um, i know it's making me anxious and, and give myself a chance to process this create more space my mind to deal with that circumstance so now let's get back to we're angry and we're going to do something with this anger because we don't want to swallow it down so bring the mouth into a nice round like this so it's different to the pucka where it's more like that this one's o shape exactly and so then it's a nice breath Great. Now notice as you breathe out, the belly's coming in. As you breathe in, the belly's coming out. And I guess a lot of folks who may have had children have practiced this breath before. And breathe in through the nose. Exhale. Ah. How are you feeling? <laughs> right now lightheadedness so when we bring a lot of oxygen in the body we can feel lightheaded so simply just come back to a natural breath let the breath find its natural rhythm and that lightheadedness will definitely pass 
Now, we might feel quite a lot different if we're angry, and so that breath is going to really transmute, release that anger. So we're probably going to feel a little shifted when we come out of it, but that's a good thing because I want to bring up groundedness uh, in light of being mindful and doing those locationals, checking in where we are. If we are angry, if we are feeling our energy is getting out of control, coming back to the breath, noticing where you are, feeling the clothes on your skin, feeling your skin, noticing what you're sitting on, feeling the back of the chair if you're sitting in a chair, noticing the hair on your shoulders, all these things that we don't normally notice, that we've acclimated to, but if you're trying to get regrounded again, these are some tools that can really help bring the awareness back into the physical body. Because sometimes when we get anxiously stressed, bless you love, all of our thoughts become dispersed. They're all out here and we can't concentrate. We don't know what we just thought, let alone what we just said and what's coming up next. So slowing the breath down, taking those fizzy, physical clues in the body to bring us back. Wonderful. So now, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about sleep. So, so, you know, depending on your mood and what breath has resonated with you today, you know, any of these breaths for calming ourselves can really induce a nice sleep state. But there's a really um, beautiful breath that we can simply do, and that's breathing through the left nostril. We just can't sleep. We just, mind is going, going, going. Again, meet yourself where you're at. What am I thinking about? Acknowledge it. Okay, but I want to sleep now. So I intend that I'm going to sleep. And by placing a finger or thumb over the right nostril and breathing in through the left nostril, the energy comes up the left side of the body, in through the left nostril, crosses over and goes to the right hemisphere of the brain. And this is the side of the brain and the body that is inherently calmer, it's more spatial. It's the left side of the brain. That's all about what I gotta do, the list, all of those things that can really keep us awake at night. So that's one tool if you wanna sleep is just start breathing in and out through the left nostril. You might notice it's blocked, but this side is more open because it is activating the left side of the brain so that you are thinking more quickly. Um, sneezing is something that often is shifting which nostril is dominant in any time we sneeze. It could be the body's going, I want to shift to the other side, so we'll sneeze. So it's good not to stifle them, just to let them out. Um, but then with our sleep, uh, another really great tip, breathing through the left nostril, doing the inhale shorter than the exhale, and then going back through the course of your day but in reverse. So what did you do right before bed? What did you do right before that? And then you were stuck in the dishwasher and then you were having dinner and then you were walking the dog and then you were, and just see how far you go back. And quite often, accompanied by this breath, you'll find that you are all of a sudden waking up in the morning. And when we wake up in the morning, we wanna check in with how we are, how we slept, maybe journal our dreams. There's always a message. But we want to breathe. We want to fill the lungs up on some fresh energy. You know, we've probably been breathing you know, quite shallow, not moving a whole lot. So we can get a lot of air stagnant in the lungs. We want to refresh that. So a few beautiful, long, deep breaths as we've practiced. Now, the other beautiful thing to do with the breath is to make a sound. So when you're first waking up, you're not quite there. You're moving the body. Definitely stretch. And then let the body speak, not from your mind, just let the body speak. You take a big breath in, as you exhale, let the body groan and moan and tell you how much it doesn't want to get up. Let your shoulders speak, let just whatever sound comes out of your body without your mind judging, without your mind you know, telling you all of these things, not yet. We're just going to mm. wake up and we're going to breathe and refresh our oxygen in our body and and say things to ourselves like it's going to be a great day and I feel fantastic even if we're faking it a little bit <laughs> the more we say these things the more they really hit home our mind always believes everything we say 
So if we're saying, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, the mind's going, oh, they're tired, super tired, and everybody's tired. So it's all good. Feeling, actually, I'm feeling good. It's a nice little trick that works. Um, but so getting back to, um, there is a breath that I'd like to share uh, when we know that we're really just trying to cultivate um, balance in our life. We, you know, we might not have a lot of stress, or we may work through some of the stress using some of these techniques. A breath is truly wonderful for just bringing the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system into their health and balance is the alternate nostril breath. So um, this is a practice that I, I really urge you just to give it a go for, you know, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, each day for a period of time and, and see how it impacts you. So the way that we practice this, again, we can begin with a thumb over the right nostril and we breathe in through the left nostril. So the breath, the energy is coming to the right hemisphere. And then we exhale out of the right nostril. So the breath is now leaving the left hemisphere, crossing of the nose, going down the right side of the body. And then we inhale through the right nostril. Filling our left nostril and then exhale out of the right. So continue this pattern, inhale left. Pause, exhale right. Practicing your long, deep breathing technique. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. right exhale left and now at your own pace continue for a few more rounds really recognizing we are bringing balance we're balancing the hemispheres of the brain and when they're balanced it means that they're communicating more and as we do this breath we're bringing in more communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. And this is a tremendous thing for our ability to think and function, problem solve, overcome inner conflict, because we're getting this integration, the left and right side of the brain. The left side of the brain is about our analytical mind and the right side is our spatial mind, our more creative mind. So when they're working together, we can bring creative solutions to analytical problems and in our analytical mind we can be more creative. And just overall, when we practice this breath regularly, um, our lives really do improve. And again, a reminder that we want to hold our mind in present time attention when we breathe. And each time we notice the mind wander, this isn't about punishing ourselves because that's what the mind's designed to do. So each time we notice the mind wander, what makes our mindfulness practice work is actually the action of bringing our awareness back to the moment. So now when you finish the cycle that you're on, release the hand then take a breath in through both nostrils. And you can breathe out with a ah through the mouth and the nose. Beautiful. So you might notice if you decide to practice the alternate nostril breath that like, one nostril is blocked. How can I do this? And usually there is always one nostril that is more open than the other. And that really is a clue into which side of our brain is working more at this time. So if we notice that one side is more blocked, Simply work with what you have. You'll notice as things come more into balance that it will clear and, um, and you'll find that there'll be more of an even flow in each nostril. I just want to check in that I have mentioned everything that I've talked about. I do believe I have. So 
Are there any questions at this time? I'll check if there's any questions in the chat. And there are not. Because everybody's just getting it. That's great. Um, Clock on one side, let's say it's the left, so then your analytical is over driving or what? Okay, so so if the left is if the left is blocked, it means that we have more action in the right nostril. The right nostril correlates with the left hemisphere of the brain, which correlates to our analytical line. So if you're feeling really hyped and amped up and your mind's racing, you might find it's more likely that you've got this right nostril is more open. Did I get it right? Right nostril, left side. Yeah, if it's open, it's working. Exactly. Exactly. So then if the left is blocked, then you have to work on the relaxation. Yeah, I might have got your question back to front. So if the left nostril is blocked, we're breathing more through the right nostril, so we're going to be more activated. If, our, if we're noticing that the left nostril is more open, then the right hemisphere is more activated, and so we're going to be more feeling creative, feeling more relaxed, feeling more expanded, not feeling like I've got to get everything done right now. Yeah, good question. So I thought with just a few minutes left, if there's a breath that you enjoyed, then you might like to practice it for a little bit. We'll just go for three minutes and see how you feel at the end of that. I'm going to make some nice sounds with this ball. So remembering that a lot of these breaths we can do anywhere, anytime. Some of them we might want to sit down and, and in that case really focus in on your posture. I mean posture always. <laughs> Would you like to do the lion's breath throughout our meditation? By all means. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, yeah, so you're just checking in that you have a long spine. Imagine that you can reach out of the top of your head. Feel your body lengthening in the torso. And then select a breath you'd like to practice, the long deep breath, the square breath, the lion's breath. Inhaling shorter than the exhale, the four breath in with the long exhale out, the whistle breath, the sitterly breath, uh, the O-shaped breath if we're really ramped up and angry, uh, the left nostril breath for calming down, and all the alternate nostril breath. We might like to shift through different ones. <sighs>
taking in a deep breath. And exhale. Noticing how you're feeling. Checking in with your thoughts, your body. And coming back into your regular daytime feeling. So that you can move on with your day a little calmer, a little more centered. Certainly more oxygen in the body. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for joining us online. And um, yeah, my name is Kalyan Darshan, Jacinta. And I look forward to practicing again with everybody soon. Thank you. Awesome.